Hi, this is Ali Purdiali from Cookie.com. This is a short introduction to Fluid Pro, one of the most advanced widgets that we have in Cookie. But actually, this is the most advanced gallery widget that we have ever created. Before any further ado, assuming that you have seen the previews, let's go to Muse and start using the widget itself. When you place the widget on the page, you have three different sections. The buttons at the top, the main widget container, which is the gallery container and you have the thumbnails. Unlike the previous versions, you have the thumbnail separate. So you don't have to define the thumbnails inside the category buttons. Let's say that you wanna have four images in the gallery. I duplicate these two and I get four images. I go to fill panel. I change the background on the uh, thumbnails. And when I preview the page, I can see the gallery. Let's click on this one. So we have a full width project. So as you can see, this is pretty much plug and play. I haven't changed any option right now. And I can see the gallery as soon as I place Fluid Pro in the page and duplicate the thumbnails and add my own images in the thumbnail using the fill panel. But let's take a look at the option panel. In the option panel, you have so many options, but don't get confused. These are just additional options for you to customize the gallery exactly the way you want it to be. In the breakpoint section, in the main, main controls, which is the most important part, let me explain this first. Uh, you have the gallery name. If you want to have multiple galleries in a page, you can just duplicate the gallery and change the gallery name on every single aspect of the new copy. So for example, let's change this to gallery fluid pro zero two and you have to do the same for all these different aspects because you have the gallery name option on all the different aspects of the gallery so in the breakpoint section in the main widget option panel you don't need to define the breakpoints but only if you want to you can define the breakpoints manually if you check this option but if you do not check this option the breakpoints uh, will be defined automatically so let's say four images on each row, four thumbnails on each row for the first breakpoint, which is 960 by default. But remember, the only breakpoint that you need to enter in the gallery is the first largest breakpoint, which is 960 pixels by default. So if you are not going to change that, you just don't need to be worried about this number. And for the second breakpoint, I need to have two thumbnails on each row. Now I can go ahead, design my project, I can add a new breakpoint. I can create the whole website around the gallery. And when I preview the page on anything larger than 960 pixels, I have four thumbnails on each row. When I get to 838, I get two thumbnails on each row. And you saw that I did not enter the 838 number inside the breakpoint option panel because it picked it up automatically. If I select the height option, I have three different options, no responsive height, percentage browser's height, and keeping the proportion between the height and width, between the width and height. So when I change the height into the keeping the proportion between the width and height, I have to select an aspect ratio. If it's on one, it gives me a square. If I change it to two, it means that the width of the thumbnails are gonna be two times bigger than the height of the thumbnail. So when I preview the page, As you can see, the width on the thumbnails are two times bigger than height. And let's go to the thumbnail section. In the thumbnails section, we have normal state, rollover state, and appearance. In the normal state, whatever you pick here as the image filter is going to be the default uh, look of the image. So when the page loads, the thumbnails are going to look that way. So if I click if I pick black and white and change the scale to 1.2, the thumbnails are going to be 1.2 times larger than the original size when I load the page, when, when the page loads, when I preview the page in the browser. And the overlay opacity is going to be 55. And the overlay color can be picked here, which is black right now. And the image filter for the rollover state can be set here. Let's select Walden. And the scale, let's change the scale to one, which is the exact original size of the thumbnails. And now 
everything else here is pretty much self-explanatory you can change this option to show only the thumbnails in a specific category and type the name of the category so that when, when the uh, gallery loads when the page loads and the gallery loads uh, it loads only the images for the first time only only the images inside the alpha category so when i and you can change the name alpha of course it loads only the images inside the alpha category and as you can see we have the black and white filter for the default state of the icons for the normal state of the thumbnails and when i roll over the thumbnails i can see that beautiful effect on the image you have so many other different filters to apply to both different um, states as well the normal and the rollover state let's go to the light box in the light box we have the transition type you can select the transition type here let's change it to rotate and you have the loop back you have the keyboard navigation option you can use the arrow keys inside the light box to go next previews up brings up the quick view option down arrow key will uh, take it away and you also have all the options to control the colors you have the option to turn off and on uh, the different options that you have and if you add a new icon for any of the icons that you have in the light box if you add an image it will overwrite the default icons that you already have inside the widget so let's take a look at the video controls you can pretty much control everything inside the video controls youtube logo vimo title badge you can add a play button you can add a play button on hover and you can have the html videos to start loading as soon as the page starts so the video width can be uh, defined here and at the very end we have the thumbnails animation which can be used to control this little animation that happens when i click on one of the buttons so let's take a look at the thumbnails inside the thumbnails we have the option to select the gallery name which is going to be the exact same name for all the different aspects we have the category name we pick the category name that we want the thumbnails to be inside the category we have the appearance which is pretty cool because if i change the appearance to in light box only let's say that i have five of these images that are going to show up only in the light box like this one when i preview the page as you can see that thumbnail doesn't show up in the gallery but when i click on one of these and go to the quick view it is included in the light box so when i navigate in the light box and we have the rotate effect that thumbnail shows up as well in the light box image we can add a new image for that light box so if i select this image for this light box let's remove this and get a new thumbnail to have the same appearance and if i add let's change this image this now when i preview the page this is by default I can see this little spaceman and when I go to the light box image and add a different image for the light box for example this desert and preview the page when I click on this spaceman I can see the desert instead of the spaceman so you can have a different image for the thumbnail that can be defined through the full panel and add a totally different image inside this widget option panel for the light box image you also get to choose the video if you want if you don't want to just put it on no video you can add vimeo or youtube you can add html5 video you can have mp4 and ogg file uh, ogg file is good for firefox mp4 file is good for pretty much everything like chrome like safari and some other browsers just to make sure add both of them if you want to use uh, html5 video you can get to choose title and description and add an icon image if you add an icon image here it will override the icon image that you add here in the title description and icon and i think i missed this part okay in the title description and icon in the main widget you can uh, completely change the look of the title and description on the thumbnails and in the light box so you have the animation on hover let's change it to move into the thumbnail so right now when i 
scroll over the thumbnails, the title and descriptions go away. But now that I changed it, when I roll over the thumbnail, they come inside the thumbnail. They come into the thumbnail. So I basically changed the animation. We also get to change the description font size, title font size, and all the other uh, different uh, properties of the thumbnail and the description. And we can add an icon here, which can be used as the universal icon on, on the thumbnails, unless you select one of the thumbnails and add a different icon for that specific thumbnail, and it will be, ov be overwrite by the one that you added inside the main widget. That's pretty much everything about the normal thumbnails. Now let's go to the standalone thumbnails. Let's not remove these ones. Standalone thumbnails are the most powerful part of this widget. When I place a standalone thumbnail, I get to choose a totally different height for that standalone thumbnails. So let's say keeping proportion in the design view, but you don't get to enter an aspect ratio for this standalone thumbnail because you don't need to. Whatever you have here in the design view, you get to resize this. The other thumbnails cannot be resized because they are gonna be placed inside the gallery in a fashion that you control through the main widget option panel. But this one is just like any other object. You can put a text here and just like any other object, you can insert the standalone thumbnail inside your layout. And let's add a different image for this one and preview the page and let's go to the 960 so as you can see this is a standalone thumbnail but when i click on the thumbnail it brings up all the different images that we have in the gallery so at the same time it is connected to all these images it is connected to the gallery but it can be placed anywhere on the page and it doesn't need to be inside the gallery and it can be styled exactly the way you wanted it to be just like the sample that we have here if you go to the customized layout sample these are all the standalone thumbnails so as you can see we have everything all around the page and we put the standalone thumbnails along with other uh, objects along with the text along with the forms and the buttons so that's pretty much everything about the gallery and if you have any questions about any specific part of this gallery, please feel free to contact us at support at cookie.com and send us your samples. We will be happy to share your samples on the preview site and see what you have done with this powerful gallery. Good luck.